Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to the very first episode of Stitch Nation. Who is excited? This is a brand new show. Um, this is our first time doing it. We're super excited. Um, just to let you know, we did have Takeover Tuesday, so I want to just let you know the difference. Stitch Nation is going to be a project-based type of live stream where you can sit and sew with us. So with Cindy, she's going to be showing you how to make tutus today so you can sit and chat and sew with us, just like a sit and sew type of thing. Fun, good time, right? Sounds good. <laughs> but real quick, before I introduce Cindy, I just want to let you guys know tomorrow we do have SMP Live as well. So tune in. There's Kyle. We're going to make him a tutu too. We'll, we'll, we'll get him into one. I promise. <laughs> but we've got a full show for you today and tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow for SMP Live and we will see you there. But let me stop chatting here and let me get Cindy. Cindy, let's see. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I hear a lot of music in the background, though. Is that normal? All I hear is music. <laughs> There's music going on. Uh oh. I don't think we've got any music. Are you guys hearing music too? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Just me in the background. Oh, I hear uh -oh. like a carousel carnival music. It's really strange. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> the Wi Fi, the Wi Fi gremlins are out today. <laughs> Let me try something different oh. because I don't know where this music is coming from. Uh oh. I don't know. <laughs> Well, let me do some shout outs while I'm while you're getting that going. So let's see who's here today. I saw Belinda Brine. I got her on here. We got Yolanda Morales, a lot of familiar faces, Nilda Valencia. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited you guys are here. This is going to be really fun. Me and Blaine and everyone here have been super excited for Stitch Nation. So it's very, we're very excited. Let's see. Let's see if Cindy's back. Let's see. Okay, can you hear me? Got it working. We got gotcha. you. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you on. You are our very first guest. How are you feeling? I'm good. I thought I'd be really nervous, but I think since there's so many of my friends in the chat there supporting me. Oh, that's so awesome. You could see everyone. That's so good. No, but let's, let me just ask, tell me, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where can we find you? your socials link everything shout us shout yourself out yeah for sure um so i'm cindy mokata of course uh, my my um etsy shop is called the tinted stitchery i also have a website the tinted century but on youtube you can just find me as my name cindy mokata and basically i sell mainly children's clothing i do other things as well but mainly like party outfits and birthday shirts and stuff like that Fun, fun. So what are you gonna be showing us today? What's what's on the what's on the schedule? So I know it's only in July, but I really wanted to put some Halloween stuff in my shop. You've kind of got to get months ahead. And actually yes. people are already purchasing Halloween stuff from me. So it kind of made me yeah, like kind of made me think I need to get more stuff up. So I wanted to play around and do some new Halloween outfits. A lot of times that one is adorable. <laughs> fun so the good thing about this one is i don't know how close she gets to the camera i want to do it here i want to match this shirt that says boo it's it may look all white in the lighting i'm not sure but the bats are actually at like a grayish silver color and they glow in the dark and the um ghost glows in the dark as well the fabric glows in the dark and so does the thread and then there's like glittery stuff all over so it's really fun i wanted to kind of make it two two to match it and <gasps> Oh, it'd be perfect. It'd be perfect. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started. I'm so excited. I'll be sitting back here watching, learning something new. If you guys have any questions for Cindy, make sure you drop them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to ask them and we'll do a little Q&A at the end and stay tuned for the giveaways. You guys know us. You guys know us. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and let you get started, Cindy, and we'll see you in a bit. Awesome. Hi, everybody. All right. So I guess we'll start with what you will need to, to make your tutu. To start off with, I'll just go over the basics. You can add whatever you want, and the more you do them, you'll probably add more and more items to your tutu. But for today, I'm kind of going to go over what I have to make this particular one to match this little shirt. So, of course, I have my tool, and I'm only going to do one color tool. I chose black for this one. 
I don't have any black Halloween tutus, I don't think. So I have a purple one, and I want to go with black. And you need your elastic. This is going to be a 12-month um, tutu to fit my little mannequin here, so I cut it to 17 inches. You can use a threader to kind of go through your, your channel, your casing, but I just put two paper, two, um, paper clips, two pins on the side, and that works just as good. So those of you who don't have maybe a threader, you can just do that as well. I have a bow for my tutu. The bow actually has glitter and black in the middle to kind of help with the bling, match the bling a little bit. Of course, your scissors. Ribbon of your choice. I'm only gonna go with one color this time. I usually do multiple colors, but I'm gonna do two layers of the same color and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. They're gonna overlap and just make it look really fluffy. And for this tutu to kind of match the bat theme, it's on the shirt. We made little foam bats. It's like a sticky craft foam that you can, that it will stick to the tool. So just some little embellishments of how well you can see those. And it's really cute. The, the glitter is really cute. And of course I have a ruler just to help straight cut the tool. I did want to add some leggings to this outfit. So if we have time after the tutu, I'll make a quick set of leggings on the Juki serger that I just got. So I'm having so much fun with it. But let me show you this fabric. It matches. It's orange with little silver shiny bats. So I figured with this outfit in my shop, I'm going to offer short sleeve and long sleeve shirts and then leggings or no leggings. Um, so whoever's buying it in whatever part of the United States, if their Octobers are a lot more cold than here in Central Texas, then they can get stuff to add to it and the little girl can still wear it. And it's a little bit better than just black leggings. It'll pop and match the outfit. So that's my plan for those leggings, if we have time. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. I do want to mention that if you're making a tutu, the best thing to do is clean your space, your tabletop, thoroughly. Tool tends to have everything stick to it. Even things you cannot see will get stuck in your tool and you'll think you had a clean space, but this will pick it up. So what I do is I always wipe down my tabletop and I vacuum thoroughly around my table and around my sewing machine because thread, anything like that. If you have a pet, make sure you vacuum because any pet hair or anything will get stuck in these tutus. And if you're selling them, you don't, you definitely don't want that. So just make sure you clean your area thoroughly. I'm going to move all this stuff over. Oh, forgot about this, the bounce. This is very important when you're doing a tutu. I did not use it when I first started and I would get really frustrated because the tool would kind of fly everywhere and it was very hard to manage, especially in the winter time. I had so much static in the tool. So what I do is when I'm when I'm working with the tool about to cut it and everything, I spray it with this bounce stuff and it makes it so much easier to manage and to sew. So make sure you give yourself some of this. There's different types you can use as well. I'm gonna move our little mannequin over until we get the rest of her clothes done. So here, this piece of tool, well, this bolt of tool I have is actually 54 inches. Um, so you're going to need a bolt to do this, this type of tutu. There are plenty of other tutus you can get where you can use a little rolls. Um, but for this ribbon trim tutu, you're going to need a bolt. And I say that because they're long enough and it allows you space to cut the length that you need for your specific size. And also, it is dub it's doubled. So... This right here is actually two layers of tool. And you're actually gonna end up folding the tool so it's, you end up having four layers. You want that thick fluffiness to your tutu. If not, it's not gonna be very fluffy and exciting, I guess you can say. So I am doing a 12 month tutu. So I have my 54 inch tool on a bolt. Typically, the amount of tool you want to use is going to be your preference, but a good kind of starting point is about 10 yards, around 10 yards for a 12-month tutu. And as your tutus get larger in size, you can add yardage to that if you want. Some people prefer less tool and not as fluffy, and some people prefer more. I've actually had customers tell me they want it really full, 
can they pay for extra tool? Like they want it so, so full, as full as you can fit it on the elastic waistband. And then I've had some people tell me um, their daughter's really little, please don't make it too full. Also, one thing to keep in mind when you're deciding on how full your tutu is going to be is how many layers of ribbon you're going to use and how, what type of ribbon it is. So for this tutu, I'm using 7 8 inch, and this is satin tutu, so it's very light. It's not going to weigh down the tutu. I do have some tutus where there's burlap ribbon. I have lace, burlap, gross grain ribbon quite a few layers and I've had somebody want to add a fourth layer to that and I have to advise them, hey, that's going to make the tutu pretty heavy for a 12 month old baby. Are you sure you want four layers of that type of ribbon? And then I have to explain it to them. They don't know, your customers won't know if you're going to sell them. So you might want to kind of educate them on that. But if it's for your family member, use your best judgment. But for this 12 month tutu, I'm just using two layers of 7 8 inch satin ribbon, so weight is not going to be an issue at all. So my table's about 5 foot, so I'm just used to knowing for the size how many times I need to roll my tool back and forth to get the um, yardage that I'm looking for. So I want close to 30 feet, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm never exact. <laughs> I can do two tutus back to back, and they're not going to be exact. It's there's no exact math to it, just whatever you're feeling. I'm gonna, I aim for about 10 yards for this size of tutu. So what I'm doing is I'm just rolling it across. So that's 10 feet. That's 15 feet. I'll go about, about 18 ish. So one thing you need to keep in mind is you're going to cut this tool in half. I'm going to cut it in half. This is how I'm doing. So that whatever I just, whatever yardage I just measured, essentially you can times it by two. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the side of my table and make sure I cut a straight line and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I can see a straight line because my mat has measurements on it. This is the way. I think the best way to show you guys how I can do this is maybe here. I don't want to block the camera. Okay, we'll do this. So here's my tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over long ways and just keep folding as straight as I can keep it and just bring it all to me so I can fold it into another bolt. I don't want to block the camera. Make sure you guys can see, okay? This becomes harder if the bolt of tool that you have is really wrinkled or one layer underneath is shorter. I've had some really bad bolts of tool before that just make it very difficult. But this one just so happens to have been packaged perfectly. Which is great. So if you can see, essentially, I can feel the static as I'm rolling it towards me. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray it down real quick. Try to make it so much more manageable. And there we go. Okay, so now we have our bolt. This is all the tool that we're going to use. But one thing you want to do is we have to measure it off for a 12-month-old baby. So for 12 months old, typically I make my tutus six inches in length. Six to six and a half. Like I said, there's no really exact. There's a, I go by that typically and then I just do whatever I'm feeling. <laughs> and it also depends on the type of tool, if the tool's really messed up or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the tool on this end, kind of give me a fresh, fresh starting point, fresh line. Now I can measure how long I want this to do. So I'm going to go to the 
24 inches. So now both ends are completely straight and then you're gonna want two pieces. So you just cut it down in the middle. So now I have the yardage that I need and the length that I need. So these two together is gonna to make my tutu. So now that I have my two pieces, I'm actually gonna spray a little bit more. I can still feel. There you go. Okay. So this is when I take my tool to my sewing machine. Let's not get you guys dizzy. I'm gonna move this nice and slow. There we go. Let me know if I'm getting everybody oh, too dizzy. I have to be careful not to get everybody, the camera too close to my windows because the lighting is very bright. Okay, so what I did for this, this tutu is I did change out the thread color. So I'm gonna have, I have black bobbin and black top thread. A lot of people don't change their colors I typically do. I have bobbins in almost every color just because I'm weird like that. I don't like, I don't like to have many different colors in like tutu. So I have different bobbin colors. I don't change them all the time. It just depends on the type of tutu I'm doing. So for this one, because I am using the orange ribbon, I'm going to keep it black. I'm going to keep the thread black. I'm not going to change the thread throughout this whole tutu. One thing I do to make it easier is I actually have a hook underneath my sewing table that I kind of connect my ribbon to. That way when I'm sewing ribbon on, it just keeps coming as one continuous flow. Sometimes when people don't have it, they keep it on the floor. It can kind of get tangled like that. It makes it a little bit more difficult. But there's a lot of other things I've seen people do. I've seen them use paper towel rolls. Whatever works for you, hey, there's no wrong way to do it. So. I'm going to go ahead and connect this underneath my Juki. And I am using the Juki DDL 5550N Industrial. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to sew the, um, the channel, the waist channel first. I'm going to actually sew the ribbon on first. I can do a tutu several different ways. And depending on how you sew it, you'll get a different effect. So on this tutu, I'm sure you guys can see it. I sew this one differently. I actually sewed the waist channel first, and then once I had it folded and the channel done, I went and sewed three layers of ribbon, one on top of the other. As you can see, it's pretty flat. All the ribbons lay right on top of each other, nice and perfectly flat. It's nice and full, but the ribbon isn't jumping around. They're flat on top of each other. I'll show you what this method is gonna end up looking like. So you're going to just open up your roll, kind of like this, and, tell you can see it, and start sewing the, the ribbon onto the, the ends of your tool. I want to make sure you guys can see this. Probably bring the camera a little bit closer. And see if I can bring you guys a little bit closer to the sewing machine. You guys see how the ribbon is kind of attached to the bottom of my sewing machine? Let me know, Kennedy, if you need me to adjust anything for the viewers. How you guys are seeing on your end? Always backstitch. I think you're looking good. If you want to turn, yeah, that's perfect. That way they can see you. Good, good. Forgive me if I create kind of a curve I'm not supposed to. I'm gonna have to it's all there. good. It's all good. I'm just afraid if I change it, the lighting will wash me out. It's so bright. Um, okay. Let me fix this a little bit and work with what I got. I do have the stitch, the stitch length at two. I used to do it at three because it goes faster. And when you have tons of them to do, go faster, right? But I, I like the way it looks better at two. So if you want to go faster, you can increase the stitch length. It's going to be... Everything's going to be your preference, and as you kind of play around with them and make them over and over, you'll have your own preference. 
There's no, there's really no wrong way. Everybody, a lot of people do teach this differently. Okay, let's see if I can do this kind of curve. <laughs> Sorry if I'm cutting you guys off. This is kind of difficult to do like this. <laughs> if you have a clean floor, go ahead and let your tool drop. Always have a clean floor though, because it will pick up everything. Let your let it drop. It's in that roll. So as you're sewing, it's just gonna come off your your little makeshift bolts perfectly. Just kind of make sure you're staying, um, the tool staying together. So like I said, you do have two layers and you want to make sure both layers are sewed into the ribbon. And don't sit like this when you're sewing. Make sure you use good ergonomics or else your neck is going to hurt. <laughs> stays really straight, especially if you use that static guard, the tool is staying in place, and if you're sitting right, it's even better. It stays in place perfectly, lays on top of your ribbon, and literally just goes like butter. Super smooth. Pretty side facing up on this side. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. So you're going to want ribbon on both sides of your tool. But the pretty side is facing down. So I have pretty side up over here that I just sewed, pretty side down. Because the idea is once this ribbon is on your tool, you're going to be able to fold your tool over, have two layers of ribbon kind of overlapping each other, and you have four layers of tool. I hope I'm doing good, keeping myself out of the camera's way. or like a little box. So when you drop your tool in there, you're not just dropping it on the floor, you're dropping it into a box, that way it's, it's not being rolled on by your chair. So you can do that too. Industrials because it is so fast, 
My brother was great, but it only went like 800, 850 stitches a minute, I believe it was. <laughs> channel now for your elastic so you can just take it fold it in half here's where you can fold however you want you can fold it right on top of the other ribbon as flat as you want and you can put it up a little bit half an inch so you can do right on it and go above whatever you want whatever you like whatever style you're going for just fold in half however you want I typically like to do the second layer laying right on top of the first layer And we are using three-fourths inch non-roll elastic, so I'm going to do a three-fourths inch casing. A lot of times people want to do a larger um, casing, like an inch or so, to make sure it slides in well. If you do the casing too large, it's going to look sloppy. So you're not going to have a firm, let's see how close I can get this. You're not going to have a tight fit around your elastic. You're going to have like bunching. You're going to be able to see the thread. Um, you don't want to see the thread hanging around the elastic. You want it to be nice and tight and just look like it flows perfectly. You don't want any extra tool hanging out there. The tool will stretch enough to fit the elastic. Even though you have three-fourths inch elastic with three-fourths inch tool, it'll fit perfectly. I used to worry that it would be too snug and it wouldn't go in quickly enough and it would be too hard, but it, it goes in perfectly. So make sure you do a tight, a tight casing. Try not to block you guys. Make sure that <laughs> the string doesn't get stuck like that. Oh my good one. I broke it. One second. Hang tight. I do use embroidery thread on my JP because it's so fast and powerful, I just found that it doesn't snap as, as much. Typically, if I do get any breakage, it's maybe, maybe once throughout the time. So let's not have that happen more than once here. Let me have to block the camera for a second. There we go. I'm trying not to. This broke over here. Okay. When you fold it over, just make sure that the it's nice and tight over here. You don't have any one side's not creating, you know, just make sure you have a clean channel. See in the beginning where it broke, we can have it here. Blocking it there. Got some tool in there. And you can usually whip these out in no time, like less than half an hour. If you're not talking and worrying about a camera, it's super fast. Also depends on how many layers of ribbon you're doing, how elaborate you're trying to make it. And typically, if this is right in front of you, it, it's much easier to do to do it. They'll just keep going straight. Okay. And the more you use your sewing machine, the easier it gets for you. I know a lot of people said when they first got their industrial, it was too fast. They couldn't make a straight line. So it gets easier. I actually think it's much easier because it does go by so fast. It just takes it. So as long as you're holding it correctly and your posture's good, it'll just take it perfectly. Okay. 
On the elastic, I did want to mention that I typically use three-fourths inch for anything for, uh, under four T. For any sizes four T or above, I move up to one inch elastic. That's just my preference for the look that I like, so no real reason why. Also, if I have a dark colored tutu tool, like purple, um, a dark blue, black, I use black elastic. If I have a lighter tool, I use pinks, whites, like kind of like that, light blues, purple, like lavender, I will use white. And you're at the end. You will notice that your back stitching, you don't have to worry about cleaning up all that thread at the ends right now because when you put the tutu together, when you close the tutu, you're actually going to have the sides join and sew them because you're going to end up cutting the sides anyway. So don't even waste your time cleaning that up right now. But that's basically what you're going to have is your two layers that kind of flow over each other loosely rather than a tight stitched on finish like this one. Like this one. So you see the difference, flat, stuck to each other. These kind of flow over each other. And you would, oh, I think I'm running over it. And you would just do the same thing for the second piece, because you're gonna join them together. You could do one whole long piece. It just will take, um, you'll just use more tool that way because you're going to end up having to cut it to length anyways. So when you cut this to length, you still have another 12 inches left. So you might as well just double it up. And it's easier to manage when you have two smaller pieces rather than one large long piece hanging over your sewing machine. Same thing, pretty side down the ribbon. Line it up as best you can. You can hold it in your lap or some carnival music going on. <laughs> I have no idea where it's coming from. Oh, I think it's gone. I think it's gone. I'm going to ask a couple quick questions real quick. I know a lot of people were wondering. Um, Joe Allen was wondering how much tool, how do you know how much tool and what length to make for different sizes? One second. I'm sorry. I cannot oh, get rid of that oh, music. Oh, sorry. I, didn't, I thought it went away. <laughs> Well, how's everybody liking Cindy so far? Until she gets to me, mute this real quick. How's everyone liking Cindy so far? The first episode of Stitch Nation. Is everyone having fun? Let us know in the comments. And if you guys have any other guests that you want soon, let us know. Give us some ideas. But, I mean, I've just been having fun watching Cindy right now. It's just, I'm loving learning what she's got to show us, especially with the bounce spray. I know a lot of people were asking about that bounce spray. Um that you can find it's kind of like fabric softener i want to say and you can use it and it just helps make the tool a little bit more work workable work withable <laughs> okay i think she's back oh she's got it good uh, here it is i found out where it was coming from uh so it's a, it releases wrinkles it um, helps with static all kinds of stuff and literally a lifesaver did you say something i can about imagine that? Yeah, so Joe Allen was wondering, so how do you know how much tool and what length to make for different sizes? 
She said, say, for instance, you wanted to make a tutu for a man for a Halloween costume. How do you know how much fabric you'll need? Yeah, so that's the way I do it. I hardly ever do adult tutus, but when I do, I just kind of use the math that I already have for my personal my personal preference to just keep adding to it until I believe the math equals out. I don't know if this makes gotcha. sense. So say, so for this 12-inch tutu, I'm using 10 yards. Okay. So for 2T, I might use 12 yards, so-and-so. So if I keep going, okay. higher. And then I'm like, okay, well, the waist is how long? And then I just keep on adding to it. That's the best gotcha. way to explain. So I typically ask the adults for their, their waist measurement because it's not going to gotcha. be as easy as like a toddler or a young kid's tutu. You're exactly. Gonna, yeah. You're going to yes. Gonna, and then, and then someone else, I think I want to say it was Stephen Norma Kaufman, were asking um, the seam allowance. Um, what what did you do for the seam allowance on those tutus? So as far as the ribbon, when I'm putting the ribbon on? Yes. You can, it just depends on the size of ribbon that you're using. If you're using one and a half inch ribbon, which is like what these are, you can use like half inch seam allowance, whatever your preference is. It's going to depend also on you overlapping. Do you want the thread gotcha. to be seen when you put on another layer of ribbon? If not, do like a one-fourth inch seam allowance, whatever your preference is. Some people don't care if, if the um, thread if the if the thread is seen and you'll see their their stitching right in the middle of the ribbon. That's their preference. It doesn't matter. That's all gonna come to your preference. For me, I don't like it to be seen when I overlap it. So like on gotcha. here, on these one and a half inch ribbons I have like a one-fourth inch seam allowance that way when I put the next ribbon it completely covers it if that oh, makes see that works out it works out <laughs> yeah, it's all your preference too you some people don't care and they have it right smack in the middle of the ribbon it just yeah. works for you there's really no rule. whatever works I mean tutus they're so unique you can yeah. make them however you want the they're options so are endless he makes them so different and there's re no real rule they're really yeah so. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I feel like I'm learning something new with everything that you keep saying. So I'll let you get back to it. I'll think of some more questions. I'll get some more from the comments and we'll, I'll come back in a little bit. All right. Awesome. Now that we got rid of that carnival music, I will go through this piece as fast as I can. <laughs> this one's 50 yards so you want to make sure that you're you're not in the middle of a tutu that's and you're doing double layers on both sides and you, you don't end up with enough yardage I mean, it's going to ruin your tutu just make sure you're doing the math when you're deciding on how much yards of tool you're using how many how many layers of ribbon you want to use I, I usually buy everything in 50 to 100 yards of ribbon just so I can make sure I can get a few tutus out of each roll of ribbon Again, pretty side down on the ribbon. That's just the way I sew them. Some people sew it pretty side up. It's up to you. But for me, because I'm layering this way, pretty side down.
easier when it's right in front of you. And if I did not mention, this tool is 100% polyester. It's what they call soft polyester. this side of the ribbon. We just fold over the ribbon just like this and you will see this does give you the length that you that you need which was at least we wanted at least six inches in length. and tutus are meant to be short right they're not skirts they're tutus so they are meant to run shorter and so in my shop we offer bloomers to go underneath the outfit and typically we will put something on the bloomer that kind of correlates with the theme of that tutu for instance, our pastel tutus, we do a pastel rainbow on the back of the bloomer. So if a little girl's running and playing and her tutu flies up, she's covered with a little bloomer underneath that has a cute little rainbow. So you can offer that. But with this outfit, we're offering leggings. So we won't need to offer a bloomer. Three-fourths inch seam, I mean channel, sorry. Blocking you guys. Make sure you have a clean line that both pieces, both layers are attached to each other. You want that clean, clean channel. You don't want a sloppy channel or casing, however you prefer to call it. in half and just put one layer on and you're like literally done in minutes minutes you could probably do the whole tutu in 10 minutes it'd be fun for you to give it a try and kind of time yourself see how you improve Because I have orange ribbon, I would have wanted an orange bobbin and top grip, so I wouldn't have wanted to see it, because I'm just like that. But I don't have orange um, bobbin or top grip, so we're just going to keep it the way it is. And you're almost at the end already, so... Like I said, again, it doesn't matter what your ends look like. Those are going to get cut off anyway when you join all the sides. So don't worry about the thread hanging off the end. Just don't forget to backstitch. All right, so now you have your second piece. Now we get to do the fun part, joining it all together so you can see what it's going to look like. So I'm going to move the camera back over to the table slowly to not get you guys dizzy. Let's see. Oop. Not too fast. As long as the camera goes with it. 
There we go. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so now we're going to get our elastic. Remember, because it's a um, 12 month tutu, I cut it to 17 inches. One thing you can do too is if you're measuring like your granddaughter or a family member, just take two inches off their waist because it's elastic. So if someone's measuring 21 inches, just take away two inches and cut it to that. There's plenty of sizing charts you can find online as well, but with elastic, it's pretty, pretty much the same rule. Okay, again, we are using non-roll elastic and it's very important because you don't want it to start turning and getting all nasty inside of your, your casing, channel, whatever you prefer to call it. <laughs> Just make sure whether you're using a threader or using the method with these um, safety pins, that you make sure you're going through the, all the layers appropriately. Because if not, that'll look really messy as well. Make sure I can grab it. My nails don't really help with this sometimes. There we go. And I typically stick my finger in it a little bit to kind of make sure that I'm gone through all layers before I start. The last thing you want to do is start going and then realizing you're not through all the layers the way you should be. That's just what I do. Put my finger in there right before I put in my safety pin. And then you just weed it through. Just like you would anything else that you're putting, you know, your elastic on. You can go fast, don't worry. You're not gonna rip it. As long as you didn't go too small. Otherwise, it's not gonna rip. Just just go. I have seen people rip it because they don't, their line for their casing is not as straight as they thought maybe, and it's not a full three fourths inch. Just gonna move it down. And the good thing about this tool being black and the elastic being black is it can be a little forgiving. So my thread is black, the elastic is black, the tool is black. Be very careful though when you have like a yellow or lavender tool, white thread, white elastic, and you don't do the casing right and make it too big, you're gonna be able to see white thread all over your tool <clears throat> at the top. And it can just look a little messy. You wouldn't wanna sell one like that. So let me kind of show you guys how tight it should be. It's in there perfectly, but it's really tight. Nice and tight, no free flowing tool on top, no extra tool underneath. I think it's so important to have a pretty tutu to focus on the waist, making sure the waist is clean and accurate. So we almost got one whole piece on there. <clears throat> and there's no more static at all, so it worked. Really, really easy to sew when you spray it. I really, really encourage you to use that anytime you're making a tutu. You'd be surprised at how much easier it's gonna be to manage. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of move it down evenly so I can fit, fit the next piece on. You can start seeing it take form, start seeing how fluffy and bouncy it's going to be. So move it on down, make room for the next piece. I have a clean floor, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this down. Make sure you put this the piece on the same way you put the other one. I like to put ugly side facing me, pretty side facing out. That's what I do then when my husband helps me, he does them the complete opposite of me. So if he's helping and I take over, I'm, I just can't. My brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> Again, just make sure you go through all layers. I put my finger in there. Make sure this is straight, the elastic is straight and you're putting it in the right way. You don't want to have it curved or bent. Okay. 
And same deal. Just drive it through. I've seen people with makeshift threaders. I've seen you can use one of these threaders. Let me show you. One of these. This is my third one. <laughs> pretty easily. You can with many different methods, whatever works for you, whatever is easiest for you. If you don't have that, these clips work just as great. Doesn't take very long at all to get it all on there. So again, just in case you missed it, I used about 10 yards of tool and cut the length to 12 inches on the bolt because when you when you fold it in half, you want six inches. So I cut it each piece that I had to 12 inches. Fold it in half to make the actual length six inches. And the elastic, again, for the waistband, I did at 17 inches. I've seen people use different measurements. I've always used 17. I've never, I mean, I always use that number for 12 months. And I've never been told a tutu does not fit. All right, now we're at the end. This is where my thread broke, remember, and I had to go back and forth, so it's not very pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that in. And then you've got it all on there. So here's your tutu. You can see how it's fluffy, how it starts to take shape. Big difference in this method of putting like putting ribbon on both sides and folding over versus folding over and putting them all one around top of the other. Different, different type of look. So now I need to take both sides, both ends and close the elastic. This industrial machine does not do a zigzag stitch, which is fine. It doesn't need to. If you have a regular sewing machine that does, you probably want to do a zigzag stitch. If not, you can just go straight up and down the elastic a few times. I do it excessively. You don't need to do it as much as I usually do it. I would say at least three times back and forth. So let me go ahead and close this real quick. I'm gonna close it off camera just so we don't move the camera around again. Why I do it so excessively? I'm just like, oh, it's not necessary. I think I'm just afraid that one day someone will say, because you know how rough little kids are with their outfits, putting them on and off. I don't ever want someone to say that it came off. Just cut the ends, make sure you have it clean. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is kind of shift over my tool to cover that close the part where I closed it so that nobody can tell where you closed your tool. And then you just want to make it even, right? Distribute the tool evenly throughout the entire tutu. You don't want it all jumbled in one spot more than the other. So you just move it along. Now, because we did put two pieces on here, you're going to want to close, close those pieces shut. Some people hot glue them. They don't sew them, they'll just take both ends, kind of put them together like this and hot glue them. I started off that way because that's just the way I learned, um, but I do not do it that way anymore. I just sew them. So you're gonna wanna take the ends, kind of meet them, and then sew a straight line here. And same thing for the other side. So just that close really quick, and then I'll show you what that looks like once it's closed. Okay. Kennedy, in the meantime, while I'm closing the tutu, is there any questions that I can answer for anybody? Am I being really Yes, fast? let me let me get some. I know there was a lot coming in here, so let's see. Okay. Yes. So let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. I just want to move the camera a million times to make everybody. So I know you kind of talked about this briefly before, but somebody was asking, why would you make two 10 yard pieces instead of one 20 yard piece? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, let me explain that real quick. I did that because 
Can you guys hear me okay even though you can't see me? Yeah, we can still hear you. Okay, great. Um, I do that because you're gonna have to cut it to your length, right? I'm gonna need to cut it to 12 inches in order to fold it over to create six inches. And when I cut it, I'm leaving a whole nother piece that's 12 inches long. Gotcha. So instead of putting that on the side for later or throwing it away, I might as well just use it to complete to complete the tutor. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. You have to cut it to length. So a lot of people were asking, how wide was the tool that you were using? 54 inches. 54 inches. So she's using 54 inch tool. And then the ribbon was seven eighths of an inch. This one's seven eighths. Okay, so let me kind of show you how we closed it. When if you close it really good, it's hard to find it, which is, that's good. You don't to it that's a good it. sign. That's yeah. a good sign. And when you were talking about how you sewed over it excessive amounts of times, that is something that I would do for sure. <laughs> you can't be too, you have to make sure. you got to make sure. Yeah. I'm so afraid someone one day is going to say, we're putting it on and it popped or whatever. I'm yeah. Excited. Kitty Goading asked, how long does it take you to make a tutu? I mean, you just busted it out in it's less than an hour. And let, I would say in one hour, you could do at least three, at least three. And the, you heard and the, it here, folks. Yeah, when you're making them to sell, I don't sell. I'm okay. I want to be want to be careful how I how I say this, but I don't sell any tutus for less than fifty dollars. So if you're getting out at least three in one hour, it's one hundred and fifty dollars in one hour. But yeah. the best way to do it is if you have four or five tutus and you're going to start sewing pre-cut all of them just like have so them all, have all your ribbon yes. next to you have them all pre-cut and just sew and keep sewing and put them to the side don't even put them I mean with that system you I can mean I could just do that yeah I just just keep going keep going <laughs> literally if you want to change colors you only have to get up to change colors just keep going and then at the same time you can put the waistband and all of them at the same time you can literally dish out a lot yeah and simple tutus like this probably even four an hour but if you're going to have them where you have lace and then burlap ribbon and all kinds of, it, it, the more stuff you put on, the longer it'll take. But right, right. Yeah. Especially I, since you're just doing a straight stitch too. I mean, yeah. just, I mean, I could probably, I probably wouldn't get one done as fast as you can, but I could, with your help, I could probably get one done. And well, reason you want to make sure the camera can see if you don't have, you know, if you don't have all that you're worried about, then you can get them out even faster. Exactly, exactly. Let's see. So this is, I closed it. So you can have a, can you see that? A straight line. Where yes. You can it together. So then you're going to want to take a lighter and kind of just heat seal the ribbon because it will fray. You just want to make sure that the ribbon, when they're wearing it, it eventually doesn't fray. So just take where you cut and heat seal it. You don't need to do it while you're sewing because you're going to have to do it in the end anyway when you need the size. So just do it at the end. Just be smart with your time and do it at the end. So you're done. You've got your little tutu. Now we would want to add a bow that I can sew on. And for all transparency, I don't make bows. Anybody who follows me that may be watching knows when I picked this up that I did not make this. So I don't make bows. My husband makes them for me. That might sound strange, but I don't know why he can make the perfect bow and I cannot. So he pre-made my bow for me for today. I love that. I love that. <laughs> he makes all your bows. It is adorable. Like he does the woodworking and he does all these other things, but he'll have like the other day he was over there making wood signs and had to come in here and make me some bows real quick. So I had some work to go out. That's adorable. Um, let me see. There was a question up here. Let me find it real quick. Um, let me find who asked it. Annie Rue asked, does your selling price include, so if they buy the tutu, does that include the t-shirt and the bow? No. So they can add different things. So there's a drop down menu when you go to a listing that you can purchase. You can purchase tutu only. You can purchase tutu and shirt. Tutu shirt and bow, or tutu shirt, bow, and bloomer. And okay, it just gotcha. more expensive from there. Yeah. Gotcha. And then whenever you finish with that, they just want to see a close up of the stitches and how um, how you close it up. I know, I don't know if you're going to be able to find it now. 
Yeah. When I pulled up the um the part that I just showed where I pulled up the sides. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think they just want to see that again. And then by the way, I have um Cindy's Etsy shop running down below. It's called the Tinted Stitchery if you guys wanted to go check it out. She's got some adorable things on there. I was looking at it while while she wow. was showing you guys about the two trees. I'm like, oh my goodness. Thank you. If I, I had, so if I had little ones, I would dress them up. <laughs> I'm putting the bow on. A lot of people do ask me, do I sew the bow into the elastic? And the answer is yes. So if you're wondering, yes, I do sew it into the elastic. And I've never had, after nearly a thousand tutus, I've never had an issue. And one thing I do with the bow is I sew both sides of the bow onto the elastic and I super glue the middle part onto the tool as well. And that may seem a bit excessive, but I had one time where a little girl pulled her bow off and like she pulled the stitches off, like she literally just pulled it right off, which means she was probably hot. She didn't want it on, whatever the case, she was, she did not want it on and she pulled it off. Well, the mom wasn't happy about that. So one thing I, I promised myself that I would do. I can't control little kids due to their outfits. The one thing I can do is make sure I secure it the best I can. So I sew it now and um, hot glue it. That way, if anyone tells me it came off, I'm, like, I'm sorry, I can't help any little girl rip it off. So here's the close, close up again. Find it. Here, okay. Here's where the two ends, I join them together. See that? That's where I join them together. And you can't see it from this side. So I just take them and put them together, kind of like a little burrito. There's the bow. There's the stitches. Like I said, I would use a orange stitch if I had orange bobbin and top thread. I would just go and change that thing to orange. I feel like when you turn it over that you can't see the thread. Or this way. I like it all to blend in. But realistically, depending on the color of the tutu, I can't always make it all blend in. So that's okay. Then we're going to add our little bats. So I want this tutu to be worn kind of with a bow to the side. And then add some bats. So this material does have a sticky backing. If you want, you can add like a drop of hot glue just to be extra safe and make sure it sticks to the tool. It'll stick, but just to be safe, you can add that if you want. The only reason why I don't like adding hot glue is because you'll get those spider webs from a hot glue, and I don't really like the way that looks on my tool. Sometimes they're hard to take off. So there we go. We're going to add. This would be really cute. You know what I just thought that was really cute? It was blue and yellow with bats. It like a bat girl. So like Batman. Okay. Anyway, just thought about that. But you can't sell it, of course, because it's a character. If it was just you making it for your family member. I'm just gonna add some little bats. You can add as many or as little as you want. Let me get our little girl. And there she's wearing her hair bow, which I also did not make. Everybody knows I don't do that. Okay. Let me get her dressed. Maybe add, treat her like a little lady. broke off. We'll just go with it. Okay. Move the bow to the side a little bit. Her little bats. We have one in purple as well. And on this one I used black glitter ribbon on top and purple on the bottom and did black bats. So there you go. Her tutu is all done. Add a third one if you want. So this will all glow in the dark. All this will glow in the dark. And then her little tutu will glimmer because of the glitter on the bats. And then there's glitter on the bow. There you go. Does anybody have any other questions? I'm looking now, but that is so adorable. Yeah, <laughs> that is so cute. She and could I'm wear a full support of your Batgirl idea too. 
right? I just thought about that. I was doing it. I'm like, I thought it was a good idea. I think it is. I think it is. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody asked, is this a giveaway? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> So but she's got so many options on her Etsy shop, and some of them are so cute. The pastel tutu was my favorite. It's so, so cute. Me right now, we can't keep up with them right now. I guess that's the, that's the thing. Oh. I guess for summer. Yes, 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 yes. All the parties, all the parties. Let me see. I saw a couple more questions, but everybody's all excited about the tutus. <laughs> you can Anna asked. You can, you can have pearls. You can have anything. But be careful. The options are endless. Yeah. You don't want Nana to asked, will those, will the bats stay on when they're washed? Okay, so one thing we do want to touch is you don't, these are not machine washable. These okay. two tubes are not machine washable. The tool cannot go in the washer and the dryer. Um, what, the, what we put on the information is we say, like on my selling stuff, I say hand wash slash spot wash only. So if, you, if mom needs to put it under the sink with some detergent and kind of hand wash it, lay it flat to dry, these will not go in a washing machine. The shirts, yes, but not the tutu. Gotcha. Yes, that's good to know. That's good to know. We wouldn't want anybody putting one in the washer. No, 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 no. No, I think they're so cute. Let me see if there's any other questions. You want to integrity yeah. The tool. Do you want to bring it up a little closer to the camera just so I can see it a little bit better? I think they all just kind of want to see the close-up finished. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Here, I'll get out of your way real quick. This, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And I think it's so fun how she'll be glowing in the dark and running around with it. But you see how this method, it's just so fluffy. The layers are so, so fluffy. And I'll give you a close-up of the other one so you can see the difference in the method. Oop, I think she's going to fall. And then there's this kind where it's flat, lays flat. Still very pretty and fluffy, but not the same effect. I love them. They're so cute. They're so adorable. I love them. <laughs> all the different colors, ribbon, an animal print ribbon, all the colors, different times, and there's so much you can yes. So much. Yes. Okay, Cindy, let me ask you again, where can they find you after watching you? Where can they see more of you in the future? Yes. So I'm on YouTube, just as my name, Cindy Moncada. I make a lot of different things. So you guys could go there and catch me there making different outfits and different things. And the tinted stitchery on Etsy. Awesome. Yes. And a lot of people were commenting, I love her sewing room. And I oh, do too. It yeah. was, a, I just, the setup is amazing. <laughs> I wish I could give you guys a full tour, but with this camera, if it goes on those windows, it messes up the lighting so bad. Oh, so. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Next time, next time. <laughs> But let me say thank you so much, Cindy, for coming on. It, it was such a fun time watching you make that tutu. And I know everybody else loved it, too. They're all saying, loved it. Nice job. Awesome job. Oh, but thank you so much. And we hope to see you again soon. And I hope everybody goes and checks out her Etsy shop. She has just the most adorable stuff on there. Just go check it out. Just go do it. <laughs> all righty, Cindy. Thank you. And have a good rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Okay, guys. Now it's time for the fun fun part of it all the giveaways so let's come on over here I'm gonna get our little giveaway thing over here and the first thing that we're gonna give away is our so mats so they have we have about I think four Kyle 14 15 oh he's not there I think 14 to 15 different styles and we have four different sizes so you can go and pick whatever color that you want and we have so many different options. I have one on my desk right now. We have two new colors, a gorgeous little teal aqua color, and then a cherry blossom design. That's, we love it. We love it here. It's amazing. <laughs> you can use them for so many different things. You can use them as a pin cushion. They're, the options are endless. So let me go ahead and draw, and we'll have a lucky winner for the so mat. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Shirley Burling, Shirley Burling, congrats. You just want a so mat. So all you have to do is head to smplive.tv and fill out the information and they will get that mat sent out to you. Pick out your color and the size that you want. Um, we have different sizes for different machines. If you want more space, less space with the, with the mat. Um, but yeah, go ahead and go to smplive.tv to claim your prize. <laughs> Where should they go to claim their prize, Kyle? 
<laughs> SP <and> Live.tv. <laughs> okay, now for our next giveaway, we're going to be giving away a Brother BM3850, which is a great sewing machine. You know, if I know a lot of people were talking about their grandkids, this would be an awesome machine to teach your grandkids how to learn to sew. And I mean, maybe down the line, make some tutus. You never know. So let's go ahead and draw our winner. Let's see. I always get so excited when I see the names. Okay. Lisa Gratana. Sorry, I'm going to, I don't mean to mess up your name. Gran Gratana? Congrats, you won. You won the Brother BM3850. So go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize. Just put your info. Let us know that you came from Stitch Nation, episode one. And put your info down and we'll get that machine shipped out to you. Oh my goodness. Who enjoyed today's show? I'm so excited. I had so much fun. I love learning new things. And I feel like with this, and especially more episodes to come, You'll learn a lot. We'll do some projects. We'll do some things, get to know other crafters in the community. It's going to be great. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow to SP Live at 10 a.m. PST. We have a big fun show going on, right, Kyle? That's right. That's right. we got a big show going on tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. And don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and share so that we guys can enter to get prizes and giveaways and also subscribe so you never miss another show. We're going to have Tuesday. We've got Monday with So Steady. Tuesday is Takeover Tuesday. And next week we'll have Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden on. It's going to be super fun. Wednesday is Stitch Nation. And we've got, I think, Deb and Candace are coming in. So SMP's own Deb and Candace are coming back for a show. And then we've got SMP Live on Thursdays. So I will let you guys go. Have an amazing rest of your day. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. See you later. Alrighty. Let me get the music going. Bye. <laughs>